Welcome. Let me start this video with a question. What do you envision when you hear the word partnership? A partnership can be many things. One could think of a team, a way of working together, or even a marriage. I won't be discussing romance during this presentation. This is about cross-sector partnerships for sustainable development. After this video, you will be able to understand the partnership concept and the success factors and challenges that can make or break a partnership. Today, we are faced with a jungle of cross-sector partnerships. This jungle includes uh, councils, roundtables, action networks, compacts, initiatives, platforms, and even regular partnerships. At the Partnerships Resource Center, we stopped counting the number and, pro and types of collaborative efforts. There are tens of thousands of them. So, let's create some more order in this chaos. What do we mean by a cross-sector partnership? And what kind of partnerships are possible? So, let's start with the, lot, the latter question. Have you seen this triangle before? I discussed it in an earlier video. The corners represent three societal spheres, state, market, and civil society, or communities. The state is represented by governments. It is a public actor and is non-profit. The market is represented by private actors, in particular firms, who work on a for-profit basis. Finally, civil society is also private. They are not part of the government, but they are also non-profit. When these three actors collaborate, different forms of partnerships are formed. Let's start by the type of partnership we encounter the most. This partnership occurs when governments partner with private firms. This type of partnership is called a PPP, a public-private partnership. PPPs are the classic form of partnerships. They are often recreated to build large infrastructure projects. When the state partners with a civil society organization, we call this an NPPP, a non-profit public-private partnership. This type of partnerships are often aimed at health or education projects. When private companies partner with civil society organizations, we use the term PNPs, profit non-profit partnerships. This happens, for instance, when an organization like the World Fund for uh, Wide Fund partners with Unilever, for instance, to enhance sustainable palm oil. Yes, there is. Up until now, we have only been talking about bilateral partnerships with two sectors involved. When all three sectors are involved in a partnership, we refer to that as tripartite partnership, or TPP. Most commonly, tripartite partnerships materialize around climate change and employment problems. So now we know that there are different kinds of alleged partnerships out there. I say alleged because not every partnership is actually a partnership. So can we define what we mean by a partnership? Obviously, it has to do with working together and different societal sectors are involved. If we look at the literature, we find many definitions of partnerships. Some are quite broad, others are very specific. I find the following working definition useful. It has been proposed by the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs. A partnership is a form of cooperation between government and business in many cases also involving NGOs, trade unions, and or knowledge institutions, in which they agree to work together to reach a common goal or carry out a specific task, jointly assuming the risks and responsibilities and sharing their resources and competencies. Well, the first part of the definition lists all the potential participants in a partnership. In my opinion, it puts too much emphasis on the central role of governments. 
there are more coalitions possible, as I have specified before. What I do like about this definition, however, is its second part. It has all the core elements of what it means to partner. It shows us that it is about cooperation between different sectors, that there is a common goal, and that risks and responsibilities are shared. That makes it different from contracting relationships, for instance. It also indicates that each partner brings something to the table that the other partner may be lacking. Partnering is about using complementary skills and resources. Well, one thing is important to note here. Partnerships are not a luxury, but something you can choose to do if you have a lot of time and resources to spend. They are a necessity. If you look at the Sustainable Development Goals, we see that partnerships are essential to addressing each one of them. They are wicked problems that require responsibility, risk-taking and action from all sectors of society. Working in silos is no longer an option. In fact, partnerships are seen as so important by the UN that they constitute one of the five building principles of all SDGs. People, planet, prosperity, peace and partnering. We can frame them as means towards the other ends. The 17th SDG is even devoted to them. At the same time, we need to be critical towards the partnership approach. As said, partnering is a means to an end and not an end in itself. Partnering does not come easy. Partners may have different interests, speak different languages, and are often used to different ways of working. Partnering is very context specific. Therefore, there is no one size fits all approach to partnerships. There are, however, certain general issues that tend to play a role and that, according to our research, can make or break a partnership. Well, let's review some of them. What, what would be a breaking point here? Well, in this example, a couple of things went wrong. Both partners clearly have invested time, money and energy. They have been working towards what they thought was a shared goal. However, it seems that they didn't really check whether their ideas about this shared goal were the same. And now that the project is almost completed, they found out that they have been working things differently and are not jointly creating a beautiful railroad. Well, this is something that happens regularly in partnerships. The trick to solving this challenge is checking your assumptions about the other and communicating regularly and openly. Let's review a few more challenges and the ways to deal with them. Here the challenge is a power imbalance. Often one partner will be perceived as having more power than the other partner. Power can come from many different sources, but one that is very apparent is money. We often see the one with the most money as the one with the most power. In partnerships, we must always strive for equity. This means that while partners realize that they do not all contribute the same, they do value each other's contribution properly. One of the main elements of partnering is that partners bring to the table resources or skills that others do not have. Capitalizing on that by respecting the other's added value helps to balance power. Another issue we often see with cross-sector partnerships is that of the hidden agenda and of trust. It is highly unlikely that parties have different interests, but that on the basis of that they trust each other. Even worse, because the issue is often so wicked, you might not even trust yourself. Partners will never be 100% sure that they are able to trust each other or themselves. So sometimes they've had a falling out in the past, or they have strong preconceptions about the sector their partner represents. 
It is therefore vital that a culture of transparency is developed within the partnership, wherein partners behave openly and honestly with each other. While partners might not trust each other from the start, they need to respect each other. Building trust in the partnership is essential to effective partnering. In a study executed by the Partnerships Resource Center, we asked 222 people working in cross-sector partnerships all over the world what they thought were the critical success factors in partnering. And the following five factors emerged. Clarity of roles, responsibilities, goals and ground rules. A clear understanding of mutual benefit. Clear communication, shared planning and decision making a cleared vision of the objective, and good leadership. Well, and that, we end this clip. We have talked about how cross-sector partnerships can be defined and the different forms they can take. We have talked about a few of the challenges those working partnerships face and how these can be dealt with. But now you are able to understand the partnership concept and to understand success factors and challenges. If you are looking for more reading material and background, we have listed some for you. The first three can be found on the website of the Partnership Resource Center. Thanks for your time and hope to see you again in the next video. I will talk about how you can design a good partnership.